Hey guys and welcome to the channel. This will be the first of an iteration of videos taking a look at the most famous vehicles and aircraft in the Halo universe, comparing them to modern versions and seeing exactly how practical they would be to build in the modern day. The first one we're going to start with is the D77 Pelican. Somebody order a Warthog. You know our motto, we deliver. We'll take a look at the size of it, the flight characteristics you would expect from how it's designed as well as the armament that you see in the game and what you would expect to see for an aircraft of its use. When it comes to the size of the Pelican, I always thought it was roughly the size of a helicopter, and it's treated that way in the game. And I find that if you ask others, they feel the same way. That said, if you look at the actual dimensions available online, the Pelican is most comparable to a C-130, at least the non-stretched versions. The Pelican is roughly the same length, it is close to the same height, but it has half the wingspan of a C-130. The in-game lore says it can carry 87,000 plus pounds of payload, which is significantly more than C-130s of the modern day. And it does so with a magnetic clamp in the back, where currently almost all cargo aircraft use pallets on rollers on the floor. In game, you typically see the Pelican carrying 10 to 15 Marines, if that, sometimes as few as three or four. But the size of the payload compartment in the Pelican, roughly 20 feet according to Halopedia, in a similar amount of space on a C-130, you carry 45 to 50 paratroopers. Some of that is because the UNSC seems to take better care of their people. You have little storage compartments under your seat. It's a little bit more comfortable. In the real world, they just throw you on a canvas material across metal bars as well as having aisle seating as well. They really do cram as many people as they can in there. In game, you typically see one pilot on the Pelican. Sometimes in the cutscenes, you'll see two. In the real world, for an aircraft the size of the Pelican, I would expect to see two pilots, and most likely a loadmaster, which is a military crew position that handles the onloading and offloading of both cargo and personnel. That way the pilots can focus on flying up front. For the overall size of the aircraft, the Pelican really isn't that impractical. It's the size of modern day planes. However, its design is significantly different. And that design is going to affect its flight characteristics. The primary difference, if you look at modern planes, C-17, C-130, you'll notice that the Pelican doesn't have a tail. And why that's important is because the tail offers you directional control. And when I mean directional control, it's how the aircraft moves on the vertical axis. Generally, you don't want the plane to turn like a top. You want it to turn when it rolls, but if you turn like a top, one wing could stall before the other and cause the craft to what we call depart controlled flight, which really means you start rolling out of control. Now, there are similar flying body aircraft in today's world, such as the B-2 bomber. However, it uses spoilers at the very ends of its wings to increase drag significantly, which does cause that rotation you'd expect as if you were using a rudder. The Pelican does not have this. That said, with its split thrusters, it could kind of twist the aircraft around its axis that way. But in the case of losing an engine, you have no means really to offset that. When we look at the small wings, most people see those and like, oh, the Pelican, it can never happen. It's impossible. And I disagree. Small wings doesn't mean something can't fly, it just means it has to go very fast to do so. Everyone always joked the F-4 was a brick with a huge engine, and that could be true for the Pelican. Wings create lift proportional to their speed and size, so the Pelican having half the wings of C-130 and weighing potentially significantly more means it would have to travel two to three times the rate of speed in order to maintain level flight. Now that would be a problem if you're trying to land traditionally on a runway, because your runway would have to be significantly longer. But with the Pelican's case, it has vertical thrusters, and so it can transition to that vertical takeoff and landing capability. That said, one of the unique things the Pelican has is it has fly-by-wire both controls and differential thrust. A lot of times in the game, we see the entire flight control surfaces moving up and down, as well as the amount of thrust going to the engines changing in order to twist and turn in the aircraft. That makes the Pelican extremely maneuverable at very low rates of speed. One thing that's overlooked frequently is the center of gravity. So in planes today, when you load cargo, you have to take a look at what that does to the center of gravity of the plane. Because if a plane is generating lift in the wings and the center of gravity is too far aft, it's gonna cause the plane to almost pivot and go nose up, which can be incredibly dangerous. When we look at the flight controls on the Pelican, Different from today's aircrafts, the entire flight surface moves. 
When I say flight surface, I mean the wings and the thrusters. Now, you're starting to see some designs like the CV-22 and the ongoing future vertical lift that the Army has proposed where the entire motors move at the end of the wings. However, we have not seen yet where the entire wing surface itself is deflected. This could create some unique circumstances where the aircraft is nose high, i.e. Its, its nose is very pitched up, but the wings themselves are pointed into the direction of flight, therefore not being stalled. Generally, the angle of attack, the angle at which the wing is entering the air around it, dictates if it's stalled or not. And the same is the true for the flip side. The Pelican could be flying in level flight but have its wings pitched up very high in order to maintain lift. For the flight characteristics and the design of the plane, comparing it to modern aircraft, it's not so much that it's impossible, just impractical. There's no real reason to have all this fancy engineering and a lifting body design when you can make do with what we already have in the cargo aircraft of today. The main thing about the Pelican is if you start losing engines, because it has both eight engines spread out, both vertically and forward and aft, as well as the fact that you don't have a tail or other really directional control surfaces to help with flight, if you start to lose engines, the potential that you won't be able to control the aircraft anymore increase. The next category I wanted to look at the Pelican for practicality is the armament. And this is one where actually, surprisingly enough, the Pelican is is very practical in the sense it's almost too practical. It's, it's, it's underarmed from what I would expect. The Pelican as an aircraft is not meant to be an air superiority fighter nor necessarily an attack aircraft. It is simply a tactical airlift asset. That said, it is already a very large size. There is no reason why it could not carry bombs. There's C-130s out there today that carry both Hellfire missiles and bombs. Now, if you look at the aircraft, particularly in the Halo 4 version and beyond, you can see that they have rails on the wings underneath them. And these are typically what it looks like for pylons to attach bomb rack units and missile racks. In modern military aircraft, especially those with air-to-surface rolls, those racks where you would carry bombs. Now, the Pelican, with its size, could easily carry anywhere from 8 to 24 bombs. So there's no reason to believe the Pelican couldn't carry even more than that. And that's where I say that it's, it's almost impractical in the game because the, the Pelican is treated as like an advanced tactical aircraft. It's going in without escort, landing in hot LZs, getting shot at all the time. For the chain gun, it has a 40 mm which is a little bit larger than most aircraft today use. Most aircraft typically use a 25 millimeter. However, those are for air dominance fighters, for close-up fights. When you look at Apaches in the air to ground role, they typically use 30 millimeters. The one thing that struck me as the most odd we don't see the Pelican use is infrared homing missiles or radar guided missiles. Most times when we see the Pelican fighting other aircraft in the game universe or in the books and movies, it's at close range, engaging them well within visual sight, sometimes as far as only 100 to 200 feet. Now the Pelican, if it was carrying infrared or radar guided munitions, could be striking those assets from miles away, preventing it from having to get so close where its lack of maneuverability in comparison to something like the Banshee would be a risk. That said, a tactical asset meant for airlift may not require any sort of radar munitions if it had a proper escort, but something as simple as maybe heat seeking, i.e. infrared homing munitions both for air targets such as Banshees and ground targets such as Wraiths would be very useful. So overall, the way I see the Pelican, you know, it's a legendary iconic aircraft of the Halo universe. And it really is something that we could build today. There's nothing preventing us per se. The main thing is it's just not very practical. For the size that it is, to actually carry the loads that they say on Halopedia, we would really have to put some big engines on it, which you can do, but you start to have engine troubles and the aircraft itself may not be controllable. You know, modern aircraft are made to be very stable. You can take out all of the engines on most planes and they will glide just fine. The Pelican, you take their engines out, this thing's not gliding, it's falling like a brick. So even though it's an amazing aircraft and I'm a huge fan of it, really isn't that useful in today's world. Hey, who knows, maybe Master Chief is just a better pilot. If this is a video you found interesting or you are interested in more aerodynamics and military applications to vehicles, let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear it.